We are Ray Bella, Raymond Molinet, and Gabriella Bella. And this is our illustrious partner, Wide Garcia, who is our inspiration for the two pieces that we have that we've contributed to this wonderful Reach Out show. Raymond and I, we work as a team from the start because our entire relationship, we are married, and our entire relationship is about collaboration. Mm -hmm. And so we found at the very start of our relationship that we can produce much better results when we work hand in hand, when we collaborate mm -hmm. as a team and both bring in, you know, the best of each individual skill that forms literally a synergy. So I couldn't do the art we do on my own, nor could he, but together we produce things that are impossible to create individually. And part of why we chose the Aloha Spirit Law is because it talks about connection. It talks about the connection to everything. Mm -hmm. And it really fit our entire mission and our vision of um, sharing the deeper meaning of the greatest treasures in Hawaiian culture. So we use Hawaiian inspiration from the culture and we translate it into a contemporary form. And this time we actually chose words as our art form to translate the deeper meaning of what people use in daily life. Everybody says aloha and they mean hi or bye or some understand that it means love, but we know and we, you know, have been introduced by Wide um, about the deeper meaning of aloha. And so one of our pieces is called The Meaning of Aloha, and we wanted to translate the spirit that comes behind those, this word, aloha, into almost a piece to tell the story and educate people of something that is so important and so powerful. And we had wide to guide us through this whole process mm -hmm. and share his wisdom and share the beauty of his heart. Yeah, it's been an inspiration to have wide show up. And it's almost as if it was universally, universally orchestrated that this human being who is, you know, just so colorful and people would maybe pass him by on the street and think he was a colorful uh, character. And he's such a, a deep, wise treasure uh, to our community and to our island and to us now. I mean, we, he's our ohana. And it's just really wonderful that the way in which why it has opened us up to really understand the deeper meanings of, of aloha, aloha um, that it's actually a, um, a law, and that uh, it has deep meaning. And so it, it's opened us up and expanded us to understand that we have a responsibility as people of this land to express um, in whatever way that we can. And we've chosen these two art pieces uh, that have writing on them, but which we normally don't do. But the words are just so important that we wanted to have them expressed so that it would just spark an interest in someone for them to do further research or for them to just open their hearts to allow this aloha spirit to live within them. So the Aloha Spirit Law is an actual law, and it, is, it has been installed in 1986 in the Hawaiian statues, and we actually have a copy of the actual law. So we live in a state where it is the law of the state to conduct yourself with Aloha Spirit. And what that means, we actually wrote on the painting. Yeah, we chose um, a very contemporary style for one painting. One of the reasons for the colors was inspired by White's eyes. When he came um, and spoke to us the first time, 
There was a moment where the sun was shining in his face and this blue color of his eyes, because it's not really a color that I like to use blue somehow, but it had this color of ha wai, ha, the breath of life, and wai is the water. So it was literally the inspiration where I said it, we have to find all the layers that are in his eyes. The man is so multifaceted. So this painting has lots and lots and lots of layers, but we still did it very soft and with simplicity, which is exactly who why it is. That's what he taught us. And we used the words of the Aloha Spirit Law, and we had conversations about what that really means nowadays. Olu Olu, for instance, agreeable to be expressed with pleasantness. What does it really mean? I had a hard time finding it out. It was like, agreeable? Do I have to agree with everybody? And White says, no. But if you disagree, be pleasant about it. Be kind about it. And be really joyful about it. So we took each and every word and had discussions about what, how could we how is that Translate. expressed? Yeah, how is that translated? How is that expressed? Yeah. And so we were looking <clears throat> for other words that had that same kind of uh, intensity or vibration to express the deeper meaning. So some people will resonate with different words that are on the painting. Uh, and again, we wanted to do that so that it would just inspire. And, you know, every, everything, when we work on a painting, it's not just the technique of putting the, the paint on the canvas. It's the fact that our intention, our, um, our mana, is actually expressed through what we're doing. So we never paint when we're having a discord or we're not in harmony with one another. So our pieces kind of reflect that. And if, and if we um, are in not in harmony with regards to our paintings, we just step away from them. So because we know the importance of how energy works, and so we want to make sure that when we're touching it, when we're putting our energy onto this, that <clears throat> it's reflecting the spirit of aloha. Also, on the other side, as each and every of our paintings has something on the back, we know that everything that is on a painting is speaking to the person who is viewing it. So on the other side is what we call an energy tattoo. It's not about hanging the painting two ways, but it's about having the hidden message come through the painting. And also on the other, uh, other side is um, a poem that I wrote when I met White Garcia. And it's a poem about the man with a golden heart and purple hair that introduced us to the biggest secret that Hawaiian people can give to the world. And so the lower part of the painting also represents the water. So the upper part represents the ha, the breath of life, and it's really soft. And the wai of Hawaii is the water. And it is so deep and it has so many layers. And in a way, all life came from the water. And so we wanted to represent this with a kind of a landscape that is very contemporary, but also represent that the words that Auntie Paki, and we will explain that in a moment, brought to us, that they basically came out of the water and the land, because water is considered aina in Hawaii. Okay, I'm uh, White Garcia. And uh, I, uh, from California, but I moved to Hawaii in 1974. And to my surprise, and not to my surprise, was that until 2016, I didn't even know there was an Aloha Spirit Law. And I started asking people about, did you know there was an Aloha Spirit Law? No, no one has ever heard of it, except the people that created the law. So. I want to give you the background of how this Aloha Law came up into being, or into our knowing right now. There was a woman named Pilahi Paki, born in Kanapali in 1910. And she became a kahuna 
or a priest in the Hawaiian religion uh, by training in Makawa in, uh, in the 1900s, uh, in 1970s and 1920, before. So she was a, a master of lomi lomi and so many things, so many skills. But she was also given the title Keeper of the Hawaiian Secrets. So in 1970, she had a vision that the world would be in terrible strife in the 21st century and that the people all around the world would need to look to the islands of Hawaii to heal the world. And she died in 1983, three years before the actual law became into effect. That was in 1986. But she wrote the law. The words in this painting, the words in in, in the law itself are all written by Pilahi Paki. But it was her contribution that gave me the awareness finally in 2016. And I started looking up and Googling it. And yeah, there's the law. I also found out a lot about Pilahi Paki. And in doing so, I became uh, inspired. Uh, I just got on fire with this whole concept of we can do this. We can actually heal the world with this. We can have a shift in consciousness because of this. We cannot, uh, the law is not enforceable. I cannot call 911 and say, hey, you didn't return a smile to me and you should be arrested. But we can look at the law, embrace the law, and change our consciousness. And by doing that, all the people that come here to Hawaii and have lived here and travel can become ambassadors to this Aloha Spirit Law. And I, uh, I have only other one thing to say about this. I think I covered that. Uh, she made it clear that the Aloha spirit is in the land. It's not in the people. It's not in us humans. We have to embrace it, become part of the movement to, with the land to shift the consciousness of the globe. And that I'm going to give you the poem that she wrote <coughs> that's also on the painting in 19... Uh, 70. Okay. Now I am going to read the poem that Pilahi Paki wrote in 1970 on how to embrace the Aloha spirit. Okay. <laughs> okay. What is Aloha? Before you can have Aloha, you must do Aloha. Before you can be Aloha, you must choose Aloha. Before you can choose Aloha, you must have the power to choose. Before you have the power to choose, you must be the source of power. Before being the source of power, you must be conscious of the source. This is the Aloha Spirit Law written by Auntie Pilahi Paki. Akahai, the A in Aloha, stands for kindness, to be expressed with tenderness. Lokahi stands for unity, to be expressed with harmony. Olu Olu stands for agreeable, to be expressed with pleasantness. Ha'a Ha'a stands for humility, to be expressed with modesty. And Ahonui stands for patience, to be expressed with perseverance. So about two years ago, I was introduced to Wide through uh, an artist, Hui, a group of artists, 10 artists that were invited to collaborate by a project that was called Mala Mala Mamawi. And um, in this group, he brought up the um, Aloha Spirit Law. And I was so mesmerized by what he had to say, especially the reason why it is important to spread it. And White said, I will spread this law of love, the Hawaiian Aloha Spirit Law, until the last day of my life. And maybe you want to share why that is important. Okay, well, I see it as important because the 21st century, just as Pilahi Paki's vision said, is in terrible strife. And we have to make changes. And the changes can occur in a shift of consciousness by one by one of us that adopt the Aloha Spirit Law and take it with us and use it and share it. We can, this is applied to everyone who comes here, who feels the spirit, take it, and become ambassadors of the Aloha Spirit Law. At some point, there's going to be a shift 
Like one day the world, the people thought the world was flat, the next day it was round. The same thing can happen with our globe and our earth. And I, that is what my mission is, and that's what I hope you adopt as well. Thank so if, you. if there are enough people embracing the Aloha Spirit Law, there will be a tipping point. Yes. There will be a point where the energy on this planet will shift. Mm -hmm. And so it was not only our pleasure, but also our honor mm -hmm. to support White on his journey and to help him spread the law. And we use our art to do this and hope that we can be, become part of the movement of the Aloha Spirit. Oh, we yeah. are. Yeah, we are. And on this, on this particular piece here, as you can see, there's the reference to the Hawaiian Islands. And in that, we know that it's going to begin here. So, mm -hmm. so we also incorporated as many natural um, elements as we could. And on this painting, we chose to use the fibers of the coconut palm tree. We have learned that coconuts um, contain the most purest water on this planet because it has not even touched the ground. So when our coconut palm trees on our property were cleaned up, I saw this fiber coming out of the crown and I ran after it and um, captured it and then we cleaned it and we prepared it in a way that it would last mm -hmm. and not deteriorate and we put it on this painting also as a reference for the land of Hawaii that actually has the aloha. And also we used the Hawaiian Islands very softly in the background to make sure that all the land where this law is embedded in is, is on the painting and will shine into the hearts of the people. And what is in the back of this painting is a nautical star compass. And uh, it's a representation of the fact that the Aloha Spirit Law needs to be embraced and shared throughout the world. And so that was our representation that, um, that it will be shared globally through all voyages, through all uh, travels, and that this important message will be conveyed because uh, it's profound uh, in its simplicity. And if we can just embrace that and realize that every response, every inquiry, every delivery to another human being embraces the Aloha Spirit Law. And it's not only important to use only one of the words that are in the law, but to use all of them. Because Antipaki says, if you use not all of them, you don't use any one of them either. So it's really about learning to incorporate how can I be kind, how can I be in unity, in oneness, how can I be um, agreeable, how can I be modest with humility, and how can I be patient and still persevere. And that in our daily life, that is our task in order for us to embrace this law. So one of the challenges was that um, White lives in upcountry, Makawao, and we live down in Maui Meadows. So for most people in the world, that would not be any problem because they drive to dinner further than <laughs> we live apart. But White was so committed and he impressed me because also he does not have a car. He got on the bus and he got all the way down to Wailea where I picked him up um, on days where we could not come up to him. So there was not one moment of hesitation to do whatever he needs to do mm -hmm. to get this project done and to be there and guide us and help us and explain and answer question after question. So that commitment to his purpose, his life purpose to spread the law was just amazing. So no challenges. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to say that uh, when I met them, both of them, in the uh, artist uh, seminar, small seminar we attended, no, we, we, a bond was formed, I could feel it. And then uh, I was invited to attend a seminar that they give on uh, the Human Source Code, which is a way of bringing us all from the consciousness of the third dimension onto the fifth dimension or pure love. And so I was, that, oh yeah, I'm in on that. 
And so then they, they teach us, taught me so many things, but one of them was the optimization of a project. And I was dilly-dallying with this whole art performance I was doing with it, and I was like, oh, I'll get it done. But when I did the optimization process, which takes about five minutes, I was on fire, and I got the whole thing put together in three months. So they're, they're, they've been great teachers. The experience of uh, working in this greater collaboration, we're used to working in collaboration, but uh, to include WIDE as our uh, spiritual anchor uh, in this project was really significant. And there were no um, challenges or obstacles. It was more expansion. And we all were expanding because we were embracing the Aloha spirit in what we were doing. And there was just this euphoric feeling that came over us when we were together and collaborating on this that, you know, it was, it was very special. And there, the, the challenge was to honor Antipaki and the Aloha spirit law, to honor wide in his diligence and his, uh, really his dedication to making this known to the world. And so it was in, the, again, no challenge, but really understanding the, uh, the responsibility of the words that we were conveying. I just want to thank, too, also Raymond and Bella for uh, accepting me and uh, Letting this happen. Great.